Today's Sunday Mass with Catholic Extension comes to you from the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in the Mission Diocese of Savannah, Georgia. Good morning. I'm Father Jack Wall, the president of Catholic Extension. We build up and strengthen vibrant Catholic faith communities in America's poorest regions, where faith is strong, but resources are few. It gives us great hope to witness how the Lord is drawing people together, no matter their circumstances, to share each other's burdens and joys and to gather at the Eucharist as we do today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, on this feast of the presentation of the Lord, as we enter into the Lord's temple, let us, be merci let us be conscious of our sins and ask the Lord who is merciful and kind to grant us his forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Gates, lift up your hands, grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely, he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people because he himself was tested through what he has suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it was written in the law of the Lord Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people, Israel. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord comes back to the temple in the form of an infant in his mother's arms, in a gentle, vulnerable, humble way, a way that we can understand and associate with, not to intimidate, not to condemn, but to associate with us. As the author of the letter to the Hebrews says, God had to become one of us in flesh and blood in order to redeem us. What might that mean? When we look at stains, when we look at impurities that have to be gotten rid of, we most often think, like Malachi the prophet, this is going to take a strong, harsh effort. Elbow grease. We're going to have to scrub away at this to get rid of this external blemish. And yet, we know that there are some types of blemishes that cannot be healed externally. It can only happen from within. It can only happen when the saving medicine courses through my blood and my flesh. And what happens internally begins to translate itself externally. Think of that. The only begotten Son of God had to become flesh and blood so that he could begin to heal us and save us from within, not by our own external actions, not by any superficial action on my part, but simply because he has become one with us. He is the sacrifice, pleasing to God and worthy of our salvation. So it is. There are many times when I'm reminded that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit or meant to be. And yet I look at my temple and I say, this is clearly not worthy of God's presence because of anger, envy, greed, pride, lust, whatever it might be, because of the sins that I have committed, I begin to believe with some justification that this can't possibly be a place where God resides. And more than that, I find myself thinking from time to time, I don't even want to reside here. This is not good. I'm disappointed with the way my relationships, my life is gone. Something needs to be cleansed. Something needs to be healed. Therefore, accordingly, it is the Lord who comes to my temple. In just a few minutes, we'll be coming forward. We'll say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I'm not worthy that you should come into this temple of mine. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If I need to seek forgiveness of my sins, I should do that so that Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, may come into my flesh and blood and begin to heal me from within. That's what needs to happen. It's not just my effort. It's not my scrubbing. It's not my scraping. It's not my desire to be free of this, but only by the grace of the Lord himself that from within... I shall be healed. In the second century, the great Saint Ignatius of Antioch said that the glory of God is a human being fully alive. The glory of God had disappeared from the great temple in Jerusalem, 
And now it was returning in the person of an infant, a child, who would grow to adulthood and offer the greatest sacrifice ever on Mount Calvary. And he offered that sacrifice so that I, so that you, might become a reflection of the glory of God himself. And isn't that what we all want? We want to be cleansed of our sins, cleansed of our impurities, that in our own lives we might reveal the glory of God. And thanks be to God that he offers us that gift today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things for us, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We can be assured that God listens to our prayers. So now we bring before the Lord our needs and the needs of the whole world. For the church, we may always shine the light of Christ on those who live in darkness, bringing hope to the hopeless and guidance to the lost. We may recognize the blessings that flow from the practice of Christian stewardship in support of the annual Catholic Appeal. We pray to the Lord. For world leaders, that they may welcome holy men and women of all faiths and recognize the virtues of their work. We pray to the Lord. For all the recently deceased and the faithful departed, God, open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seed of your words scattered among us fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. Fortify us for hard times that we may endure. Deliver us from distraction from worldly desires and all that would lure us and choke us with false promises. Till us, turn us, enrich us with every blessing of your spirit, that we may be good soil, forever faithful and fruitful for you. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice. May the offering made with exultation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being part of our celebration of the Eucharist. We share a bond with our fellow Catholics as God is calling us to be one and share our gifts with each other. Won't you now help us build up and strengthen our church across the United States? please call or visit us on the web and join us next week. May God bless you and all whom you love.